Hi, um, may I please speak with Marilyn Horn? This is Marilyn. Hi, Ms. Horn. My name is Julia Drogovitskaya, and I'm calling you from Aikadenza. First of all, thank you so much for giving us your time to speak, uh, to speak to you today. So I'd like to begin by asking you about your involvement with the Music Academy of the West. Um, how did you first become associated with the Academy? I was a student here in 1953. And, and how did you get involved in terms of um, being the director? Um, I was taken out to lunch <laughs> by uh, David Keene, who was the president then. And uh, he asked me if I would like to be pro uh, program director of the voc vocal program. And I had, you know, not thought about that at all. And that's how it happened, and I said yes. <laughs> that sounds very easy. It sounds easy, doesn't it? Absolutely. Like, remember, there's a whole career behind it. <laughs> Absolutely, of course. <laughs> that's why I was asked. <laughs> of course. And what is the Academy's role in fostering the growth of the next generation of excellent musicians? Well, uh, we are in absolutely, you know, knee-deep in teaching, you know, one-on-one -on -one teaching, master classes, um, and I, I'm speaking for the voice department, okay? I'm, I'm not going to um, talk about the, the rest of the Key Academy because, I, I, you know, I don't exactly know how they do their thing. I, with, but we have a wonderful, um, wonderful instrumental program and have a fabulous symphony that plays all summer. But in the voice department, besides what I just told you, we have, we have a chamber concert that we do. We have... Um, an opera, which is opening tonight. <laughs> we have uh, opera scenes. These are all things that are public. We have uh, what, what we call picnic concerts here, where the people come and picnic on the beautiful grounds of the academy and then go to a concert. They're always totally sold out, and those, those combine the instrumental department and the voice department. And, um, you know, just all kinds of outreach that's going on, plus, uh, as I said, we have intense one-on-one -on -one lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, I'm pretty much covering it, but yeah. there's a lot. I'd love, it's a hugely difficult program, and, and you have to be pretty talented to get in here. Absolutely. Well, tonight we're very excited to be attending and reviewing your production of Mignon by Ambroise Thomas. Um, and I understand this, that this opera is a personal favorite of yours, which is quite a compliment considering the vast array of operas in which you've sung or that you've heard. Could you talk a little bit about what it is that makes you so enamored with this opera in particular? It's a very beautiful opera. It's just, you know, gorgeous to listen to. It's a, a story by a fairly, fairly well-known writer named Goethe. <laughs> and uh, you know how to spell that? Yes. Good. You, you know, these days I don't know what people know. You know who Goethe was, of right? Of course. Of okay, course. thank you. Um, and um, it's got, you know, really wonderful things for the, the uh, singers to sing. Wonderful arias, duets, trios, uh, ensembles. It's just a gorgeous opera that was introduced in, um, in 1866, I believe, and was in the repertory of... I think most of the opera houses in the world after that for, you know, almost 100 years and played constantly. And I know that it was pl always played at the Met and uh, sort of fell out of favor, I guess, in the 50s, I'm, uh, I think, around that time, mm -hmm. or, or 1960, something like that. I, am, I, am, I could look it up, but I'm not going to. No, that's all right. You, you can. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and uh, so it, it certainly has... Um, a wonderful reputation and terrific substance. So, uh, it, it, and again, it's an opera that I, I really loved, and um, and uh, I was right. It's still a beautiful opera. <laughs> of course it is. Well, we're very excited about the opportunity to hear it tonight. It's certainly underperformed. You're going to be there tonight? We will. We'll be um, attending it and reviewing it on our website as well. Okay. Well, you're going to have some surprises. We've got a lot of sick people. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. We are, our understudy is going going in for Mino. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had, uh, we have a new bass who just came in on Tuesday in the role of Lothario. Wow. We have 
two tenors who are going to share the role of Wilhelm tonight and stand at the side and sing with the music stand while he walks through it because he has tonsillitis, pharyngitis, laryngitis, everything possible. Mignon also has laryngitis and pharyngitis. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we've had a rough, rough couple of days. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, we'll I'm sure it'll be a beautiful we're, production. We're going to put it... Despite the, that. The show will go on. Absolutely. <laughs> well, stepping away a little bit and talking about your career specifically, um, your career in opera has spanned five decades now, and your record of performances is truly staggering. Are there any performances that you were particularly moved by or that you recall as, as very special or unusual? There are quite a few that I, you know, that I think uh, I sort of stand out in my memory because they they were fairly big milestones in my life, and and uh, certainly Mignon was one of them because I lost my brother in the middle of rehearsing Mignon uh, in a production in Canada. Oh, my goodness. Uh, my brother was killed in a big plane crash in San Diego, right? Wow. And there was no one who could... Could uh, we didn't have an understudy, and we there was no one who could go on because we did a a special version of Mignon, mm -hmm. which is pretty close to what we're doing tonight, and uh, uh, I had to stay and sing, so that was monumental and uh, horribly horribly difficult. But um, look, I my Met debut stands out as a wonderful wonderful evening to have the whole audience stand up with a standing ovation when I took my bow. I mean, that was a culmination of years and years of work. And um, That's, I'm so it's, sorry. A, it's a thing, it certainly is a goal that American singers work towards, and probably most other singers in the world too, but American singers especially. And um, I remember a, a particularly exciting recital that I sang in Salzburg, in, in, the, in the Salzburg Festival in 1979, that I thought it was one of the best recitals I ever sang in my life. And that was, you know, I don't know how many recitals I've sung. I've never counted. I've never counted the opera performances or the recitals, but believe me, there are thousands. <laughs> wow. Well, in addition to your time on stage, you've really enjoyed an, an impressive recording career. How would you compare your experience in a recording studio to performing before an audience? Well, the thing in a recording studio is you have to try to recreate the kind of uh, excitement that an audience will give you. You have to also try to, to make the character come alive for people's ears, not just for their, I mean, not for their ears and their eyes, because people don't have you to look at, right? Certainly. And And so you have to be try to really uh, create that character and that, that kind of uh, situation on records that you do live. Do you feel that the recording format actually detracts from from the allure of opera, which might be Oh, no, it, it only helps it. The recordings that, you know, are things that whet people's appetites and want to hear more, want to hear more of the music, want to hear more of the artist. Recordings have, have been wonderful. Now, but look what we've got now. We've got visual, we've got DVDs, we've got live performances of the Met coming into movie theaters. Absolutely, and I, I think that's a great addition. People people, people see, love them. They, they're hugely successful. It's just that <coughs> it's microphones. Right. And, I, you know, if microphones finally end up on the stage of the opera house, of any opera house, and there are many opera houses already that have microphones. That's the kiss of great kiss of death of great singing. Absolutely. You 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 understand that yourself. Certainly. I mean, opera is really the only remaining art form that is staying away from that technology and keeping to the honest voice. Well, you know, some of the legitimate theater does still. They 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 have, most of them have mics. I guess I don't know, but hopefully there are places where they don't. The okay. legitimate, and I'm talking about, you know, Shakespeare, Tennessee, Williams, and people like that. Of course. In your experience, and all the recordings that you've recorded, is there one that really stands out in your memory as particularly special or memorable? In recording? Yes. Oh, boy. Mm. Gosh, 
it's hard. I, you know, I, know. I mean, certainly the Carmen recording has been very successful. Samarama Day, Norma, those are very successful recordings. I, I, I personally believe all of your recordings are successful, as they should. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, okay, so you have devoted the majority of your life to opera. What do you feel? To Not really. I've divided it evenly, sort of, with opera, recitals, and uh, symphonic concerts. That's true. I think I misstated the question. That's absolutely true. Um, speaking of opera specifically, though, what do you think distinguishes it from other art forms? Sorry? What do you think distinguishes opera from other art forms? Well, it's the biggest one of all, isn't it? It takes in, it takes in so many um, areas. It takes in uh, besides, the, besides the singers, right? And you have the orchestra. You have the sets. You have the costumes. You have the people who, who uh, have to make all those things, people who have to direct, people who have to conduct, people, you know. It's the biggest, biggest, bigger-than-life art form that there is. And it takes many, many, many people to put it together, too. It takes a small army to, Absolutely. to have an, for an opera company. It's hard for the audience to imagine what happens backstage. That's right. Um, did you know early on that that was the career you wanted to pursue? You know, I mean, yes and no. I think I, I was always headed that direction from the time I was a little girl, and I was being guided that way uh, from my fa my father. But I, I made, up, made up my own mind. Uh, I remember when I was 19, I made the decision, yes, this is what I want, and this is what I'm going to do. So but in the meantime, I, I had been singing full-time. So it was quite early on that you made that decision? Yes. And um, speaking actually of the vocal recital, through your foundation, the Marilyn Horn Foundation, you've done so much great work to encourage interest in and support of the vocal recital. And the Mus Music Academy of the West has also been so instrumental in providing exposure for young artists and also broadening the audience attendance of performances given by the students. What are some other ways that we can present vocal arts, opera, and classical music as art forms that are relevant and more widely appreciated in today's world, especially by a younger audience? Well, are you asking where to do it? How to do it. What How do you to think do it? we can do to, to make um, the classical art, art forms more relevant to people today? Well, you, you've got to as assemble the forces, right? You have to get a place to perform. You have to find out who can sing. Uh, you got to get a conductor. You got to get a director. Uh, you know, there's all of these forces, that, and I think you have to try to get a little money behind it. And that's that's a very very big factor is to get patrons who will underwrite the situation. That's huge. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing we have. And in terms of um, young career, young careers getting started, um, as someone who's been so active in supporting young singers, how much of a singer's career potential do you think is based on their sheer talent compared to their diligence, hard work, and having a true desire to succeed in the career? You know, in the end, uh, it could be the hard work and the diligence, unfortunately, or fortunately, you know, whatever you think, it is important to have a, a voice. <laughs> You have to ha first. You have to have a voice, and the voice only comes through nature. It comes through your genes, right? Right. And and so therefore, you can't wake up one morning and say, "Oh, I'd like to be an opera singer." No, you've got to have the voice, and then you have to spend years of training, as you well know, right? Of course. And I mean, it's a huge undertaking. But I can tell you that the people who have put in the time and worked the hardest and are prepared are the ones that are going to succeed most of the time. Absolutely. There's no such thing as an overnight success. That's right. That's right. Now, we have a, as I said, we have a young woman who's stepping in tonight in the leading role of Mignon. She was totally prepared to go on tonight. That was her choice. Right. She could have not had the opportunity. That's right. No, but she, she had all the coaching and all of, all of the things to prepare her to go on tonight. But if she hadn't learned it totally and learned uh, the stage
staging and everything, she would have uh, had to stand at the side with her book, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. She's totally prepared, and I think this girl will have a career. She's also has a wonderful voice, and she's a very, very good singer. Well, we're very excited to hear her tonight. And before I let you go, I just wanted to ask if you have any upcoming projects that you're planning to undertake. I know you're an incredibly busy woman, and just on behalf of There's all the young artists and, and all the audience members really out there, I want to thank you for everything that you're doing to promote the vocal recital and, and the arts in general. Thank so you. So do you have anything else that you're working on in the future? You know, I'm always we're always planning, the, you know, the following year, and uh, we, we've already chosen uh, what opera we're going to do next year. I also teach at various universities throughout the country. I do residencies of a week each at the University of Oklahoma, at Manhattan School of Music, at the University of Maryland, uh, at uh, Oberlin University. I go to these places uh, every year, and I will um, be doing that again as the season starts. But mainly what I really am concerned about is I like very much private teaching. I do think that I, I can accomplish an awful lot that way. But I do have lots of master classes coming up that are public throughout the season. And I will, um, you know, just keep, keep going on doing the same thing I'm doing as long as I can. Well, I, I'm really excited to see what you do next and, and everything that you continue to do. Well, all right. I, um, maybe I'll see you at the performance tonight. You'll come up and say hello to me? Sure, we'll do that. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so Take much. Take care. Bye-bye. We'll see you tonight. Bye.